If you've been watching this channel for a while, you probably remember that a little over a year ago, I put myself through something I called the Thor Body Challenge in order to get ready for the release of Avengers Endgame. Well, today I am finally sharing the results with you. And yes, I know Avengers Endgame came out months and months ago. It's actually almost a year ago, but uh, we're finally getting to it now. Sorry, it's taken so long. Superhero bodybuilders, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. On my Instagram page, and even on this channel, there have been a few viewers that have been asking to see the results and for me to follow up with respect to the Thor Body Challenge, which I started a little over a year ago now. I'm sure there were quite a few of you that were wondering if I was even still doing this challenge or if I just totally quit. That was not the case at all i was doing this challenge all along however i did experience a few setbacks and that did really kind of uh put me behind with the thor body challenge but before we get into this video i just kind of wanted to briefly explain to you the 10k subscriber giveaway so i have quite a few boxes of comic books in the basement that I would love to give away to my faithful subscribers to the channel, but I will not start giving away any of these comic books or any of these comic book materials until this channel reaches 10,000 subscribers. That's why we're calling it the 10K subscriber giveaway. So if you could please all do me a solid, share this video, like it, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and we will get comic books coming to you as soon as possible. So the rules are really quite simple. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel, preferably also follow on Instagram and Twitter at GeekeryD, and then once the channel reaches 10K subscribers, I will do a draw on the channel to pick a few lucky winners who will receive comic book care packages. And stay tuned for the video wherein I will and stay tuned for the video wherein I'll be giving you a sneak peek of some of the comic book materials that you possibly could win. And now back to the Thor body challenge. If you haven't seen the first video where I describe how this challenge worked exactly, please I would encourage you to go and actually check out that video and then come back and see this one. But I will just kind of briefly explain to you right now how that challenge worked and why exactly I even put myself through the challenge. So about a year ago I was really excited for the release of Avengers Endgame and at the same time I was also looking to lose a little bit of weight so I thought it'd be really fun to maybe make a challenge out of it. So what I did was I created the quote unquote Thor body challenge and this was a challenge where I tried my best to get ripped as ripped and shredded as I could like Thor in 12 weeks time just in time for the release of Avengers Endgame. Well, it didn't exactly go how I would have liked, probably as you all can tell, because I never ended up posting a follow-up video after the 12 weeks. Quite a few things went wrong with this challenge, and it really took me even past that 12-week deadline to actually sit down, really know what I was doing, and actually lose the weight that I wanted to. So let me start off by telling you what exactly I did to prepare for the release of Avengers Endgame and to get as ripped and shredded as I could. So me not being really too much of a fitness expert, what I did was I sought out a macro coach and this was basically a person who put together my macronutrients so I was eating in a way that ideally would get me to lose weight and really get my muscles to be to, to pop out as much as possible. Ultimately, things with the macro coach didn't really work out. I mean, nothing against the macro coach or anything. It's just that what that particular coach was doing for me wasn't really working. At the beginning, I was experiencing a lot of success. As a matter of fact, I lost a good seven pounds like that. I went from 195 to 188 in a matter of weeks and I was really really excited. After I lost that seven pounds though things really became difficult. I wasn't losing any more weight. I wasn't putting on any more muscle. I just was kind of staying the way that I was and it was frustrating and I saw this 
deadline that was drawing nearer and nearer and I wasn't changing and I was just getting really, really angry. So the beginning of April 2019 comes around and the release of Avengers Endgame is weeks away and I am not even close to looking the way that I want to. I was actually embarrassed the way I was looking because I didn't want to get in front of a camera and basically tell my viewers that I had failed. So I sat down and I spoke with my macro coach and my macro coach just kept on focusing on the fact that I had lost seven pounds and this coach kept on telling me that I was looking good and, and, and I was progressing and it was gonna, gonna t probably take a little bit more time for me to reach my goal. So I really confided in the coach to get me there and the coach kind of reworked my macros a little bit to hopefully get me to where I wanted to be. So I started following this new set of macros and things just actually got worse. And I'm telling you guys, I followed my macronutrients like there's no tomorrow. I never cheated. I never did anything wrong. I was 100% compliant with my macro diet and I just wasn't getting where I wanted to go. And in fact, once my macros were revised a little bit, uh, at the beginning of April, things just got worse. I actually started gaining weight. All the progress that I had made had essentially gone away. I was gaining more weight in my gut. And I mean, I was building muscle and, and, and my arms were really getting bigger. But I, the, the point of my challenge wasn't to get big and puffy. It was to get shredded. And that just wasn't happening for me at all. And I was just really getting frustrated. So finally, I said to myself, fuck it, I'm done. And I started coming up with a dozen reasons and a dozen excuses why I wouldn't be able to get this challenge done or why I wouldn't be able to lose the fat that I wanted. I just thought that maybe I was genetically designed to be within the 190 to 200 pound range. I thought maybe I just wasn't genetically designed to have a flat stomach. And I just really kind of tailspin out of control. One thing I have to say is I did keep working out, but I wasn't working out for any real particular reason. I was just working out for the sake of working out. I mean, I do at the end of the day, like lifting weights, but I was just kind of going through the motions. I, I, I didn't really have any particular goal in mind at this point. And on top of it, the fact that Thor looked like this in the last movie really discouraged me. I mean, yeah, when Fat Thor made his debut, I laughed just like everybody else in the theater. But afterwards, I really sat down and thought about it and said to myself, you know what? Thor wasn't even in shape for this movie. I, I just looked at it as a sign from some divine power that this was not meant to be. And this was just something telling me that this challenge was just not meant to be. So I just basically kept working out, but then wasn't really watching what I was eating. And I was gaining even more weight than what I was already gaining to begin with and it just got worse. People started asking me, how are things going with your Thor body challenge? Hey, when are you gonna post the video for the follow-up for your Thor body challenge? And I'm telling you, sorry guys, I avoided your comments and your questions like the plague because I was embarrassed and now I don't have any problems admitting because I've learned a lot from this challenge, but I have to say at the time I was embarrassed and I was ashamed because I feel and I felt like I had failed and I, I felt really bad. I felt that I had failed all of you because I wasn't able to show you that I couldn't even do something as simple as lose weight. Then I went through summer 2019 and I have to say for reasons other than this challenge, it was just a crappy summer. A lot of things were going on in my life and it just, it just was horrible and not good. Then towards the end of the summer, I got an injury doing deadlifts, threw up my back, could barely really work out for, for many, many weeks. I mean, I kept, I kept working out, but I couldn't work out in the same way that I really wanted to. Then seeing how upset that I really was, my wife, bless her, stepped up to try to make me feel better. My wife herself is also into fitness, and at that time, she felt like she was plateauing in her own program, and she did a little bit of research to see if there were any resources or any services out there to help us both reach our goals in fitness. So she comes up to me and says, I think I have found a solution. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, what is it? 
what is it? Here I am expecting her to tell me that there's this new celebrity macro coach that's going to be able to help me reach my goals, or there's this new trainer who's going to get me in shape and look in the way that I want to, and she tells me it's a book. I was like, what? Seriously? A, a book? Like, there are dozens of books out there written on fitness, and if there was any one book that was going to be able to get everybody in shape the way they wanted to, well, there essentially wouldn't be a fitness industry and there wouldn't be other books published on fitness. So I have to say at the beginning, I was very, very skeptical. But at that point, I'm like, oh, who gives a crap? I'm getting fat anyway, so I don't really have anything to lose. Now, I'm a person who likes to read, but I don't like reading anything practical. I don't like reading any how to do things. I like reading comic books. I like reading sci-fi. I like reading fantasy. I like reading things that will take me to another world and make me forget about all of my weight loss problems and all of my eating issues and everything that was bothering me at the time. But I certainly did not want to read a book about fitness. But I sat down and I did it. And this is the book that I sat down to read. And I have to say, many, many months later, I'm really glad that I sat down to read this book. And this book here is called Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, and it is by Michael Matthews. And I have to say, this thing here was definitely worth the purchase for me. I am no fitness expert. I know very little about fitness. But after I sat down and I read this book, I realized that everything that I was doing to prepare for the Thor Body Challenge was just wrong. I mean, yeah, I had a macro coach who was getting, who calculated macros that hopefully would get me ripped, but that coach didn't provide me with any exercises, didn't provide me with any sort of exercise program. This coach was just telling me, yeah, just keep work out, working out the way that you do and you should be fine. You should be able to achieve your goal. Well, that certainly was not the case. And then after I read this, I realized that the way I was eating was wrong and the way that I was working out was totally wrong. Soon as I started implementing some of the principles that I learned from this book into my routine, my, my fitness routine, and the way I, even that I, that I was eating, I started seeing results. Now I wanna tell you that this isn't a commercial for this book. I just wanted to share this with you to show you how I did it because I was skeptical that a book was going to be able to get me the results that I wanted. Now, where I'm at right now, I'm not quite where I want to be right now, but I'm sure pretty darn close, and I really do feel that I'm on my way to getting there. So this was me a little over a year ago. I shared this picture with you all in the first video that I did about the Thor Body Challenge. And I can tell you that in this photo here, I was about 195, 197 pounds, and I was almost probably about 20% body fat. As you can see, I'm one of those people that really holds a lot of weight in my gut. You can see that my arms really aren't too bad, my legs aren't bad, but if you look at my abdominal region and even my chest, I hold a lot of weight in my chest and in my abdominal region. And I, those are areas that I always have struggled with and even to this day even struggle with a bit. Most of the time when people lose weight, yeah, they'll lose weight and they'll, they'll look like half of themselves, but they, at the same time, lose muscle. The thing that I loved about this program is that I felt that I was able to lose weight while maintaining as much muscle as possible. So over a year later, looking back at everything that I've been through to get to this point, I can tell you that I've learned a lot and I wanna share with you what I have learned so you basically don't make the same mistakes. And these are just very, very simple things about fitness. So this isn't a video going over the bigger, leaner, stronger method of working out, but I'm just going to share with you some overall general principles that should be applied to your fitness. So first of all, I think what we really need to get out of our minds is this 12 week, three month challenge mentality. I guarantee you, if you go on YouTube and you search getting ripped or anything related to fitness, some 12 week, three month challenge or 16 week challenge with getting as big and ripped as possible will come up. But I can't stress enough how important it is to get that mentality out of your head because those challenges 
Some of them just A, don't work, and B, even if you are successful on a 12-week challenge or a 16-week challenge, all those people aren't able to maintain their results. What you really should be seeking to do if you're looking to get bigger, stronger, healthier, more ripped, whatever, is to foster a lifestyle change. You really need to change your lifestyle. Failing with the Thor body challenge for me wasn't a total waste of time in my opinion. That challenge and, and, and reading this book and everything that I've been through up until this point has really allowed me to change my lifestyle. And it is amazing. When I look at my lifestyle now, compared to my lifestyle a year ago, it's like night and day. And some of you are probably thinking, well, if your lifestyle now does not involve donuts, cheeseburgers, or pizza, well, that's not a lifestyle that I really wanna take on. And let me tell you, that is not the case at all. I am living a lifestyle that I feel is healthy. I feel I know what I'm doing with respect to working out and I'm still able to enjoy the foods that I like, like junk foods and things like that, but in moderation. As you can see here in my most recent photo, yeah, I don't look just like Thor in Thor Ragnarok when he looks really jacked and muscular, but for me, I can really see the difference and the improvement that I made in my abdominal region and in, in my gut and even in my muscles. I, I've put on muscle and I've lost belly fat and I will keep going with this to, to get even more shredded and if I ever get to accomplishing that goal of 10% body fat or 8% body fat, I certainly will do another video to share that with you. Next thing I've learned is heavy lifting is the way to go. If you took high school fitness or high school gym or, or, or whatever, I know there is a lot of information that floats around there that if you want to build muscle, you should be working in a four to six rep range for strength you should be working in an eight to 10 rep range. And if you're trying to get ripped, you should be working in a 13 or 12 to 15 rep range. I'm already telling you, there may be some programs out there that work, but for me, that just didn't work. I've learned that in order to get the results that I want, I have to be lifting heavy all the time. To this day, since I started applying the bigger, leaner, stronger principles to my working out, I've only worked in the four to six rep range when I work out. And I primarily focus on compound lifting. This program really focuses on compound lifts. And if you don't know what compound lifts are, they're basically those, those big trophy lifts that everyone loves doing, like bench press and squats and deadlifts and, and military presses. Those lifts are the most beloved lifts for a reason, because those are the ones that are really gonna provide you with the best results and really get you those, those muscles, the ones that you really wanna focus on to pop. Next thing that I learned is calories do matter. They really do. If you look at every single fad diet that's out there, there's one thing that they have in common, and that is they're all forcing you to change the way they, you're, that you eat, and they get you to reduce your calories overall. So if you wanna lose weight and you wanna lose fat, you for sure, have to restrict your calories at one point or another. But you can't be restricting your calories always. So say you decide you're gonna go on a 12-week diet or a 16-week diet, but at the end of that diet, you're not quite where you're at or you, you don't quite look the way that you want to. Do you keep eating at a caloric deficit? Well, the simple answer to that is no, you don't. And that's something that I've learned throughout the course of these past eight months, and that is that I can't always be eating at a caloric deficit or I'm not gonna be able to get the results that I want. So the first cut that I did, and if you don't know what a cut is, a cut is basically when you uh, cut your macronutrients and your calories back so you're able to lose fat. At the end of my first cut, I didn't look the way that I wanted to. So after you get to the end of your first cut and say you don't look the way you want to, you have to slowly reverse diet back. You have to slowly start adding calories and nutrients back to your diet till you're getting up to your maintenance calories. Well, once you're at your maintenance calories, you have to stay on maintenance again for a particular period of time, say eight weeks, and then you can start another cut again. I'm telling you right now, I have gone through two cuts up until this point. First cut went really, really well. 
Second cut, not as well, because at that point, I'd already lost a little bit of weight. But on my second cut, I still did lose weight. On my first cut, I went from 200 pounds, because remember, I told you that I gained weight. I went from 200 pounds to 185 pounds. And then on the second cut, which I wasn't even as compliant and diligent on the second cut, but on my second cut, I went from 185 pounds to at my lowest 172 pounds. Now at this point here, I have been reverse dieting a little bit and you can expect to gain a little bit of weight when you reverse diet. So I've gone back up to 175 pounds. But when I look at the big picture, overall, I've lost over 20 pounds and that's, that's great. Yeah, I'm not really 100% at my goal yet but that's okay because i'm just going to keep on doing this cutting maintenance cutting maintenance cycling until i get up to my goal so right now i'm on maintenance i'm going to be on maintenance probably until about may then i'll start another cut again and we'll see where i get so at the end of the day you have to be patient that's why i'm saying we have to get our heads out of these these 12 week three month challenges because at the end of the day, they're not good for your mental health. They're not good for your psyche. And when you're not in a good frame of mind, you are not going to achieve your goal. Don't get me wrong. There are some people out there that are probably able to kill it on those types of challenges. But if you're anything like me or you're anything like the average person that has like a job, kids, other things to do, well, those 12 week challenges probably aren't going to give you the best results. So let's review that real quick. Let's get our mind out of the 12 week challenges. Let's make a lifestyle change instead. Let's keep lifting heavy in the four to six rep range and let's cycle our calories, be eating at a caloric deficit for a bit and staying on maintenance for a bit. That's what, That way you're able to eat the things that you like in maintenance, obviously in moderation, but then also buckle down and do a cut. And when you're in a cut, you won't suffer that much because you're like, you know what, just gotta get through these next few weeks, then I can be on maintenance again, and then maybe I can have, say, that donut. Before I wrap up the video today, I just wanted to tell you the name of that book again. It is Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. Heck, this thing changed my life, and I'm really, really sure that it can change yours as well. There's even a ladies version. If you're a woman and you're watching this, there's even a woman's version of this book that uses the same principles. There's just some information tweaks here and there. It is called Thinner, Leaner, Stronger. I've put Amazon links for both of the books in the description. Check out the link, pick up the book. It's very, very economical. Uh, I mean, in Canada, I spent $25 Canadian for it and that was a heck of a lot cheaper than all the money I spent on a macro coach trying to get me the results that I wanted, which I didn't even get. For 25 bucks, I was able to get some results and pave a pathway for myself to the ultimate body that I have always wanted. So anyway, that about does it for a video today. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. I would love to hear from all of you in the comments. Please tell me, have you ever tried a 12-week challenge to lose weight? How, how did it go for you? 